Welcome back everybody, I'm Nick's Lotus, your one-stop shop for bruised budgets and board states. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for daily live streams, card highlights, and uploads on Sunday and Wednesday at 6pm, and all around Magic-focused content. Magic the Gathering, to this day, is the most complex and highly played card game in the world, and this video in no way is saying it sucks now, or is jumping on the hate bandwagon. These are, however, a few things I think Wizards could re-implement to get more players to play and regain some of the hits it's taken over the last couple years. Firstly, the player's reward program. That's right, you used to get rewarded for playing at your LGS. Starting in 2001 through 2004, you would get a Wizards promo token. They would just ship them in the mail to your house after you played in five tournaments. The tokens, while kind of cool, honestly aren't that great. But in 2005, they found what worked. Full art, textless cards. Oh yes, yes, just look at this terror, or this sign in blood. On the screen are some highlights for each year up until 2011, where they stopped the program due to the program being quote unquote financially inefficient, aka made money too slow. Being rewarded for the love of the game and the love of your LGS seems to be non-existent now, and receiving promos in the mail is just too cool. Keep in mind you didn't even have to win these tournaments, just participate in them. This gave LGS's player support, gave players incentive to play more magic, buy more cards, and gave collectors a reason to maybe try playing the game. The only negatives against player rewards is their financially inefficient comment, which is just lingo for we didn't make as much money as we would have liked, which is just nonsense. The player's reward brings in more players, which means they buy more products product, which means the store needs to buy more product, which means the vendor needs to buy more product, and guess who the vendor gets its product from? Oh, wizards, baby. So yeah, the player rewards itself didn't make you a bunch of money, but it led to other aspects of your business to thrive, so... Another complaint was the textless cards are too hard for new players to read. May I point you to the Phyrexian text cards? Enough said. I would love nothing more than to want to play tournaments again, I'm telling you. Like, do any of you guys remember DCI cards? I fucking loved these things. This little card held your whole player on it. Think of it like your League of Legends or Warzone profile. It kept your stats and your rank online on DCI, as well as using that rank to allow you to qualify for bigger tournaments. You could literally compare your position on the ladder and your elo to your friends and play ranked magic with people. How cool is that? That was the DCI card's main function, but another one was meeting other magic players in real life. I remember kid in elementary school brought one of these for his show and tell and i had one in my pocket you would go to a tournament and hand the guy behind the desk your card and boom you're in none of this companion app shit that doesn't work half the time and lacks a lot of the quality of life features it needs unfortunately the dci program came to an end in 2020 along with planeswalker points which kept track of your ranking dci cards should make a return for tons of reasons one is just having to interact with the store owners and employees i know that sounds ridiculous but when i was young like eight to ten i was incredibly shy i'm still pretty antisocial. but being forced to talk to to the employee when I signed up for Friday Night Magic led to some of the best people I've ever known. It also gets people up to the front desk of the store so they're looking at more sealed product and they're looking at more deck boxes and they're looking at more products they could buy. You get where I'm going. Another glaring issue with the new system is lack of internet, connection issues, lack of phone. My friend came to the recent mom pre-release and had a busted phone from the night before and was so close to not being able to play. Thankfully he was able to play since the companion app itself wasn't working. Rank play also incentivized more people to come play in tournaments as well as reward rewarding long-time seasoned veterans. Both very good things. The cons for the DCI program is that it was too competitive of an environment and would force players to not play in order to keep their good rank and qualify for bigger tournaments. That doesn't mean you have to get rid of the DCI program. Make a rule saying you lose points for not playing every couple of weeks. That way you're not forcing them to play in every single event that happens, but they also can't cheat the system and just not play in any. Also, the issue of losing the DCI card itself, but you could lose your phone or forget a password just as easily at that point. I miss having this little piece of card board in my wallet. That's all there is to be said. Block sets are kind of making a return. I won't pretend they're not. Phyrexian All will be one, March of the Machines, and Aftermath are looking to be the first block set in a long time, but it's still got some Marvel elements to it that I'm not huge on. Block constructed and consistent block sets are what I'm here to focus on. Block sets are sets of two to four sets that all take place on the same plane and progress a story and world building throughout. The first set of a block was large, followed by smaller sets that developed deeper into the plane. These blocks had highly synergistic mechanics and fantastic world building. Block constructed was just standard but based around these blocks. Imagine sealed and standard had a baby. Tons of synergistic cards and decks and mechanics, but a limited pool of cards. 
block sets were great because they allowed you to really feel like you were on a certain plane for a bit. When we got Ravnica City of Guilds, Guild Pact, and Dissension, we were on Ravnica, every nook and cranny of it for a solid year. Block sets design motto also promoted a much deeper look from the design team and led to some of the best designs, tribes, and planes ever made. Some negatives to block sets and block constructed is that sets that followed the initial block set sold historically 20% less than the first set did. But they were also smaller sets, so that's why that happened. Also, we didn't get to see very many planes, but do you want to see a million planes an inch deep or one plane a million miles deep, you know? I loved the days where I could wake up to a promo in the mail, grab my DCI card, head to the shop with my block constructed white weenie deck with my cousin, sign up for the tourney, watch the older players look at spoilers for the next part of the block as I put one more tourney in my player reward wallet and ended my night going to Taco Bell across the street with my cousin. God, those were the days. Also, attack on the end of the video because I didn't know where to put this. Make an all vintage border set, Wizards, and just see how it goes. See how it sells and how it's received. I already see that the Urza and Mishra commander decks that have all vintage borders are selling way better than, than any of the other decks that are surrounding it. Strange. Let me know if you'd like to see any of these Wizards of the Coast practices from the past make a return. If you'd like to see daily card highlights, uploads on Wednesday and Sunday, as well as daily live streams at 6, make sure to subscribe. If you'd like to show additional support, head to Patreon at Patreon.com to become a patron. It starts as low as a dollar to get shouted out like Betsy, Tyler, and Katie, our amazing patrons. Much love, guys, and go play some magic.